let's get started with a new project in Adobe Premiere. I know for a lot of you, this is the first time you maybe have ever even seen Adobe Premiere or used it. So when we launch Adobe Premiere Pro for the first time, you're gonna come up to this screen right here. And what we wanna do is click on a new project. Some of you may have already clicked on new project. It might be a little bit ahead of me. But here's our new project window. This is where we can title the project. And I'm just gonna call this Bunny Movie. And then notice under location, this shows us the file path where we're gonna save our project file. So I'm gonna click on Browse. And what I like to do is save my project files where my source media is located. This is where I actually wanna save my project file. So you can see this folder here titled Walk Up to House. This is uh, where this project is located with all the source material. And I'm gonna click Choose on this particular folder and this is where my project is going to live, okay? So now we have some other stuff here like renderer, you know, the video display format. You know, we always pretty much wanna be in time code, you know, especially if we're working with digital film, digital cinema, or digital video. Not too many of you these days are working with a 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter film. And the audio display format should be in audio samples. Now, if we click on what's called scratch disks, some of you may not be familiar with what a scratch disk is. Basically, a scratch disk is where you are saving and recording your files, okay? So, for example, you know, if we were to plug in a camera or an audio recorder and we wanted to digitize or capture audio or video or digital cinema footage into Premiere, a scratch drive is a, a location on a particular hard drive in a folder where we're gonna save and record our content. You can see by default that all of these are set to same as project. In a perfect world, this is the right way to go. You wanna save all of your files in the same folder, right? So you want all of your source media, your, your video film clips, your voiceover, your music, your graphic files, everything theoretically should be in the same folder on the same hard drive and that way it's really easy for you to back up your project, right? Make a copy of it and put it on another hard drive, right? Uh, and take it with you. Because you know when you're working on a school computer or you've rented an editing system at a studio, you can't leave your stuff on there. It's not probably going to be there when you come back. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And when I do, it opens up Premiere for the first time. And I'm going to go ahead and just expand my window out. The basic Adobe Premiere interface has four windows. If we look here in the top left hand side, this is what we call our source monitor. And inside of the source monitor is where we can preview clips and audio. Over here is what we call the program monitor, which is what the playback from the timeline will be. So when we do add footage down here to the timeline, it will play back in our program monitor. On the Avid editing system, this is called our record monitor. But program monitor historically has meant like what's on the air, what's broadcasting. Down here in the bottom left-hand corner, this is our project window where we can import media and we can access our effects and info and all sorts of stuff. One of the cool things that I really like about software these days, especially the Adobe software, is if I mouse, like for example, on this hard line here, notice how I can adjust the software. You know, I can, I can stretch these windows out, I can make them larger, I can make them smaller. So depending on your screen resolution and how you have things set up, you can make adjustments to make things the way you want them. So I'm gonna start out, it says, you know, import media to start. So there's a couple ways that I can import media into Adobe Premiere. I could A, go the menu driven route, and that's go to file and import or command I. Notice the little shortcut here. So I'll click on import, and then I could uh, step inside of our folder, 
I definitely prefer the column view when I'm on Mac OS or Windows. So you can kind of see our file path here. We're on AI Student HD, Source Media, Walk Up to House, and here's this folder that's called Video. So now when I highlight or select this folder and I click on Import, it's going to import all of our clips into a folder. Notice that we have 14 items here. So now if I were to double click on the video folder, you can see that it now pops open what, what's called a bin. And a video uh, film or clip bin is basically a folder where we can organize our media. So I'm just going to stretch out the window a little bit here. And let's take a look at some of the features of our bin. Right now, in the uh, bottom left-hand corner of this bin, you can see that we are in the icon view. We also have what's called a list view. So if I change it to the list view, you can see the name of the file, the frame rate, the media start and end, the duration of the media. If I scoot this window over to the left and then I stretch it out, you can see that there's a lot of other information here what's called our video endpoint and out point, which we're going to get into in just a second when we set in and out points. You can also see the duration of the clip and what's called video info. And this is the resolution of the video clip. In other words, how many pixels are we working with here? So you can see that this is 720 by 480 pixels, which is standard definition video, um, also known as 480i or 480p, and we'll get into uh, resolutions a little bit later in this particular course. So over here under audio info is our audio sampling rate, and professional film and television sound starts at 48,000 hertz, also known as 48K, and you can see that the resolution is at 16-bit, and if I grab one of these little etched lines here, I can stretch it out, and you can see that some of these clips have stereo audio, okay? So this is kind of a basic overview of the bin. I'm gonna stretch this back. I wanna go back to our icon view, because this is definitely the view that I prefer where I'm able to see the clips. And you know, as I stretch the window out, you can see that my view changes. So if I mouse over one of these clips, which is kind of a cool feature, you can see that it plays a little bit of the video. So if, as I move my mouse cursor over the thumb of the clip, you can see it gives me a little bit of an idea of what's happening in each clip, which is kind of nice. It's a nice little feature. Now, if I were to double click on one of these clips, what's going to happen is it will load it here in our source viewer. So I'm going to double click on this first shot called Car Pull Up Wide. And by double clicking on the shot, you can see that it now loads it into my source monitor. I want to go ahead and close out the bin window for just a second. And now let's talk about our source monitor. You can see that we have tape deck or CD player style controls here. Here's a play button. So if I press play, you can see it play the clip. And notice the little yellow uh, marker here. We call this our playhead or position indicator. And notice that I can click on this and drag and scrub through the video. So if I don't want to play it back in real time, I can grab this playhead and move it. So just like in the days of film, I want to select my start point and kind of cut off the front and I want to select my out point and kind of cut off the back of the film. The really awesome thing about digital film or digital cinema editing is that it's what we call non-destructive. So if I set in and out points here and I change my mind later, it's not like I physically cut film, right? All the information is still there. So I will drag this in a little bit and I'm gonna set what's called an endpoint. So right here where it says mark in, if you notice inside of Adobe Premiere, when I mouse over an icon, it tells me what it is. So I'm gonna press the mark in button and you can see the little mark that's now there. And now we have this kind of uh, 
light gray or dark gray highlighted area that's showing us our in and our out point. Now, because I haven't selected an out point yet, it decided that the out point is the entire rest of the media clip. So I'm gonna drag the playhead, say, to here, right where the car stops, and now I can click on the mark out button, or notice the shortcut O. So if I click right here on the mark out, you can see from in to out, this is the area of the clip that I've defined that I want to use, okay? So now there's a couple of ways that I can bring this down to the timeline. In the beginning, we'll just do something that's very simple and we'll, we'll drag and drop the clip down here onto the timeline. So it says drop media here to create what's called a sequence. So I'll take the clip now and I'll just drag and drop it onto the timeline. Notice now when I bring my first clip down to the timeline that it creates what are called video tracks and audio tracks. And here's our clip. You can see the time ruler in time code. Here is our play head or position indicator. And you can see as I scrub through or I can come over here and press play and then it will play back my clip. Notice that I have time code that's running. And then once we reach the end of that clip, it will just kind of stop automatically on its own. All right. So we've done uh, what's called an overwrite edit. We brought down our first clip to the timeline. Now we have our playhead right at the last frame of the first media file. So let's go ahead and go back to our video bin and I'm going to double click. And I want to go get another shot. And the next shot that I want to get is called Bush Shake Cutaway. And I'm actually going to use a couple different pieces from this clip. I'll go ahead and double click on Bush Shake Cutaway. And it loads it into the source monitor. I want to go ahead and close out the bin, or I could make the bin a little bit smaller. And same thing here. I want to set in and out points. So I'll start out here, and I'm going to press I to mark in, and I'm going to drag the playhead, say, to about right here. And when we see the bush shake, right before the camera starts to push in, I actually want to set an out point. So I'm going to drag the playhead back, and then I'm going to click on mark out. Now, before I showed you how to drag the clip down to the timeline, this time let's actually perform an overwrite edit. If you look here on the bottom right hand side of the source monitor, you'll see the overwrite button. And notice in brackets, it's showing what the short key is, which is the period key. And I highly advise that all of you that want to be really good video and film editors that you do learn the shortcut keys, because the more that you can use the keyboard and use shortcuts and use the mouse less, the faster that you will be. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and click on Overwrite Edit. And I want you to pay attention what's going to happen here. Right after the clip, it's going to place our next shot. When I click on Overwrite Edit, see that how it placed the shot in there? And it put my playhead perfectly at the end. So I'm going to back this up. And then down here at the bottom of the timeline, see this little ruler? If I grab this block and I move it to the left, it zooms in zooms in more so I can see what's going on. So I'm going to put my playhead about here and I'm going to press play so that you can watch our very first edit which is called a cut. So if I press play the car pulls up and we now cut to the next shot. Okay so this is basic overwrite editing. Now there's a couple different styles of editing that we're going to talk about throughout this course but right now what I'm doing is building I'm like building my pearl necklace, one pearl at a time. So there's really two types of editing. Um, in my perspective, you're either a builder or you're a carver. And right now I'm building my pearl necklace one pearl at a time by going and finding the shots that I want, setting in and out points, and then bringing them down to the timeline using the overwrite edit. Um, the style of uh, carving would be, let's say that you did an interview with someone and you brought the whole five minute interview clip down to the timeline. 
and you would carve away what you didn't want, you know, just like you would with a piece of marble if we were going to make a statue, right? We start out with a piece of marble and then we carve it away and then we're left with the bust, the face, the dove, whatever it is that we're carving out of the marble. So in video film editing, there's really two styles. You're either a builder or you're a carver. So in this case, I'm building one pearl at a time, okay? You should probably go ahead and work with the source material with what I'm doing here so that you can get caught up before we move on to the next segment.